The phrase, better late than never, <laughs> clearly applies to me right now, because this is my recap, my review for Hollywood Divas Season 3, Episode Who Cares? It's the Reunion, Part 1. Now, it starts off with... <laughs> Everyone's talking, everyone gets introduced, Carlo King does his usual, yeah, yeah, um, if I hear yes like that a couple more times in 26, I'm done with that type of, um, anyway, anyway, so we get past that, we first start to talk about Elise Neal, because Elise Neal decided that she didn't want to be on this show, do we think she made the right call? Yeah, she made the right call, because why would you want to be on this show right now, it's just... It's just dumb, and apparently Paula's kind of communicated, Carl's King is kind of communicated, but that's pretty much it. They also then talk about the new person that came onto the scene, Malika. Malika is officially indoctrinated into the group. Originally, people were saying uh, Malika didn't deserve to be a Hollywood diva, or didn't have what it takes to be a Hollywood diva. Here's my thing regarding that. Malika... She fits right in. She fits right in because they're all trying to be better or be a little bit different than what they originally were. So, with that being said, Malika and the brand that she brings, it works. It works for what they're trying to do. Even though if there's another season of this, I don't care. Um, Malika being Chloe Shadow. Look, at least she has a name. At least people know her face. So, that can't be an insult nowadays when a lot of people are just trying to make it big. Um, but, the main drama that initially starts, it actually has to do with uh, Malika's sister. Now, I don't recall her sister's name, but when Paulo originally was, not her sister, her friend. There was one scene where uh, Paulo was saying hello to Malika's sister and... Uh, people were like, Paula, stop it, you're doing too much. It's just like, no, don't do my twin. I'm thinking, why did she do that? But then in hindsight, it's just like, oh, because it's like her sister didn't do anything. Her sister was just there. She wasn't egging anyone on, egging anyone on so that's why she jumped in. That's why Malika jumped in. But the real conflict is more so Malika's friend, Dorian. Remember, Dorian came around and he basically called them old, why are you hanging out with those old people, you don't have anything in common with them, anything like that, and this is where Golden decides this is her opportunity to say, well you know what, we are established seasoned um, non-microwavable actors up here, our careers are not microwavable, it's not you put it in the toaster oven, it's done in one minute, and because of that, we're still around, we're still relevant, what are you doing? You know, it's nothing special about being someone's sidekick. And at first, I thought, oh, wait, but she's Malika's friend. Why is she saying something like that? But no, she was t actually talking about Dorian. So, Dorian is just like, look, I called you old. Everyone knows that. But I don't, I'm not disrespecting you too much because, yeah, we did work on stuff together. Yeah, I do overall respect you. I'm thinking, none of this really matters, so let's move on to Countess. <laughs> Countess, as we know, she's had the throat issues. And she decided that she's going to push through regardless. She basically had part of the cast of Moesha on this season. And Carlos King talks about her music video and uh, with Lisa Wu and with Paula. Now, here's the thing. Countess was wrong for how she initially handled her, um, handled the firing of Paula. Because it wasn't right. It wasn't right. Paula should have been told that by Countess and not by Lisa. So they do clear that up. Um... Lisa did the music video and Paula said, you know what, Countess Butt was amazing. That's all she had to say. And when we finally got to see Wifey, because we just saw a small clip and it's like, okay, we can't really get much of that or the song from it. Because clearly, TV1 and Carlos King knew what they were doing. They stitched together the best part of the song in the music video and showed us to that. And that was maybe, what, 10 seconds worth of it? Because the real music video... I'm telling you, um, Countess, she does uh, make fun of herself sometimes, so I have to believe that was a spoof. Because the song, the song originally sounded like it had potential. And it still does if a different engineer comes in and reworks it. But uh, as it stands right now, the song's trash, how it was produced, 
The music video was a joke. That's why I'm hoping it was a spoof. <laughs> and Lisa did what she did. And that's why uh, there was a falling out initially between uh, Paula and Countess. Because Paula was like, I wanted to do something classy and elegant and something that would elevate you. And you wanted to go and be in an orgy and a cesspool. But I should have listened to you and your vision. We should have known right then and there that that was true, true classy um, underhandedness that was going on there. So the next person we have to bring out because somehow she became a huge part of the season was Savannah. But before we really bring out Savannah, we first need to talk about Forrest. Now, for <laughs> Forrest, listen to this. This is about her being shady and messy. Yes, exactly. And that has yep. nothing to do with exactly. her gender. Yep. That's the thing. It was like the hot dog versus not hot dog. Was Savannah doing too much? Of course Savannah was doing too much. Of course Savannah doesn't think that she was doing too much. Of course Miss Biracial Mexican Black doesn't think that she was doing too much. And the whole time, um, people, when I say people, really more so like Golden and sometimes Malika and sometimes Paula, were saying man, him, he to Savannah. And I understand it's offensive, but when you go in the reunion, and you're basically fighting, and since they're not going to get into any type of physical fights, all bets are off. So, that's my synopsis of that. Now, I, it's pretty messed up when Forrest is speaking truths and wisdom. That's when you know you've done messed up. Because Forrest had to go and let it be known, Savannah, you came on here and you represent the transgender community on TV right now and you didn't represent them in a positive light because I know for a fact most transgenders don't do or act the way that you are acting. <laughs> I was like, oh crap, did Forrest just, this is, too, this is too much, this is too much for me, what's going on? <laughs> Lord, you know it's bad with Forrest. Yeah, but Forrest was going in on um, Countess and her weight and all of that. So Countess had every right to retaliate the way that she did um, initially. But Savannah was starting to talk, say how she had her back, had, um, had what's the child's name? Countess's back and all of that. Lisa Wu jumped in and said, that's my girl. I've known Countess for a long time. Just like you've known her for a long time. Apparently Countess has known Savannah since uh, Moesha days. So it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, or, no, the Parkers. So, the 2000s. Very long time. Now, the thing is, Lisa, let it be known, don't play me. Because I've always had her back. I've never uh, done anything malicious or said anything malicious about or to her. Which is true. We've never seen or heard, um, heard, what's the child, heard Lisa do something like that. But, <laughs> again, it was a mess because at one point, Savannah turned her sights on Malika, and Malika was just like, nope, I'm ready for you, you're a fan, you want a picture of me, and this was like, oh, Chloe Shadow, Chloe Shadow, this is like, okay, I know who I am, you don't know what look to stick to, because you don't know who you are, this is like, this, this hair is real, this hair is, no, not, it's not real, but it's sewed in, it's not going anywhere, it's not going anywhere, and it's just like, it's real unlike you, and then Savannah was just like, well, you know what? Why don't you go and just have sex with Rob and have a baby by Rob so that you can really finally be a Kardashian? It's just like, hmm, why didn't you? <laughs> I know why, because that's not a good look for anyone. Aside from the money, Rob, cool guy, but relationship-wise, that's a lot of work. A lot of work right there. But Malika said something that spoke to me. Regarding Savannah, mind you. She said, Savannah, you want to be everything else except for yourself. <laughs> Damn. Do you know how bad it is when someone says, you want to be everything else except for yourself? <laughs> There's no words to describe that. And then it switches from Savannah first versus Golden and Malika and sometimes Paula to Savannah versus, no, to... Countess versus Golden because Countess was trying to say I do have a voice and the thing going after me since the beginning of the show, which is true. Um, Golden has been saying a lot of side com comments about um, 
Countess since the beginning, and Countess has had it. Now, where Countess effed up on was Countess didn't tell the truth. Countess does go and say how she feels about, for example, Golden behind Golden's back, and then later on says an edited version of how she feels. So Lisa was right in regards to that. But the whole thing was, all of it is messy, all of it is catty, all of it was dumb. At one point, it was just like, this is too much. So Countess was just like, F this, bleep that, bleep that, bleep that. Um, and she finally leaves. <laughs> Lisa goes after her again. Paul is just like, okay, it's Lisa's turn. It's time for her to um, earn her paycheck, go after Countess. When Countess leaves, when Lisa leaves, Malika runs up to Golden and just like, Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Do we need to like join forces and join teams? But this is not Bad Girls Club. What are you ladies talking about? Anyway, please like, comment, subscribe. Part 2 is coming up now. Damn this retainer.